I'm going to take over Aston Villa for the next 10 seasons. The goal is to make Aston Villa the number one club in England. And to do that, we're going to have to win as many trophies as possible and create a dynasty. But it's not going to be so easy because the Wheel of Career Mode is back with new challenges. Guess who's back? Back again. Every season, we're going to have to spin the wheel and whatever challenge we get, we have to complete it. And these challenges are going to make our life a lot harder. But let's see if in spite of all that, we can make Aston Villa the club of the decade. Here we go, guys. Takeovers are back. And I had to do one with Aston Villa just as the new Premier League season is about to begin. What a transfer window they've had. Signing Diaby, Yuri Tielemans, and even Pau Torres. Just incredible. Honestly, if we do things right with our signings, I reckon we're not going to be far off from the Champions League and maybe over this decade we can win a ton of trophies. For the first season we're rocking a budget of about 30 million by the looks of it. That's because well Aston Villa already spent a crazy amount on DRB, Elements, and Doris. But I still think with that 30 million we can really improve this team. But of course before we do anything it's time for the Wheel of Career Mode. Oh man I'm nervous to start things off. Hopefully it's nothing too difficult. Come on give me like an easy challenge just to kick things off and by the looks of it it's a challenge that can really help us out. Sign only La Liga players this season. Okay, it might not help us out, but it's not too bad. I kind of wanted to sign a few players from the Premier League itself to get that experience in, but I guess we can't do that now. All right, 30 million is what we've got. We can make only two transfers, but this season, according to the wheel, it's got to be La Liga players. But before that, guys, I think I've got a way to increase our budget. We've got a fair few Deadwood players at the club right now, especially Bruh. Felipe Coutinho. Honestly, 31 years old, I think I want to cash in on him. Ooh, that is a bit stinky. The only offer we've got is 15.8 million from Juventus, but I guess we have no option. I'm also selling this guy, Bertrand Traore. He's pretty useless as well, so let's get rid of him. And so the Aston Villa takeover begins with us selling Felipe Coutinho. Hey man, coming in as a new manager, gotta make some radical changes. That's more like it. With just a couple of player seals, our budget is up to 56 million, and I think with that, we can definitely get in a couple of good La Liga players. But before before that, let's assess our squad and see what we need. Okay, we're pretty sorted in our wing positions. Diaby, Buendia, absolute ballers. Leon Bailey chilling on the bench as well. Bam Field could use an improvement over McGinn, but Elements, Kamara, Douglas Luiz, Jacob Ramsey, oh boy. And at the back, we've actually got an unreal backline. How Torres, Diego Carlos, and Emi Martinez doesn't quite get better than that. And decent fullback options as well. Honestly, I think what this team really needs is a good striker, maybe another midfield. Fielder, but I think if we just invest all our money on a great striker from La Liga, that could actually end up benefiting us quite a bit. And I think I found the perfect player to join our team, Angel Correa. Oh, this makes a lot of sense. It feels like a transfer that Aston Villa could make in real life. I kind of want to keep all the transfers realistic, and even the challenges are super realistic this time around. So it should be a cracking takeover. But yeah, can we afford Angel Correa? I reckon we can get him for a decent price. I'm going to try 37 million. Come on, Diego Simeone, help me get this over the line and there you go. Okay, I'm negotiating with Angel Correa and he wants a 2 million bonus for scoring 15 goals this season. You know what? We'll give him that because if he can score 15 goals this season, that would be a dub. And so guys, we welcome our first signing of this takeover in Angel Correa. We still got about 13 million left but there's not much we can do with it. So basically, this is going to be our team for the first season. I have high hopes. We're making it through the Premier League season and I'm hoping we can have a good start to this takeover. We've made it to the end of the season and I had no idea that Aston Villa were in the Conference League. This is great because we topped our group. Okay, we're on a run here. We've made it to the semi-finals, actually. And we go through to the final. And whoa, first season itself, we get a trophy. Gotta love the Conference League. That is trophy number one with Aston Villa already. I told you, they're building something. But ultimately, it's the Premier League that matters. And by the looks of it, we were the best of the rest, finishing seventh in the league and only like three points off top four. This is going well. Thankfully, the challenge the wheel gave us was pretty good, so we managed to get things done. But it's only going to get harder from here. Okay, one thing I'm really curious about is Angel Correa, whether he scored 15 goals and secured that bonus. Oh, no, he did. He only scored 13 goals. So, Angel, you are not getting that bonus. By the way, how on earth did Ollie Watkins get so much more game time? I think Angel Correa was injured. Oh, man, I'm, I'm so happy we didn't have to pay him that bonus. <laughs> Minute. You know what? We'll give him that because if he can score 15 goals this season, that would be a dub. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. 
life. But look at the new signings that Villa made this season in real life. The RB and the Elements have had stellar seasons and look at their overall. Not gonna lie, the first season was a massive success, but time to see if we can continue building upon this in season two. I think a lot depends on what our challenge is gonna be this time around. We got a good challenge for season one, but it might get a bit tricky here. Replace your starting center back with a 32 year old veteran. Ay, ay, ay. I think guys, the player we're gonna have to replace is Diego Carlos. To be fair though, he's 31 himself. So I think this challenge has come at a time where it's not really hurting us all that much. Our budget for the season is about 65 million. Let's just first replace Diego Carlos and see the best veteran center back we can get. Ooh, Virgil van Dijk's actually an option, but I think it's too outrageous. Plus he's joining Atletico Madrid. There's no one really interesting from the Premier League, man. We might have to look at other leagues. After a lot of hunting, the best option seems to be David Alaba. I quite like this. Maybe he wants to play in the Premier League for the first time in his career. Remember, guys, this deal needs to be a swap deal with Diego Carlos involved because he was our starter last season. So with Diego Carlos in this deal, chucking in another 20, could that get this deal done? Ah, well, this nope. is crazy money they're asking for. I'm trying 25 million plus Diego Carlos and that works. It's a lot of money, but hey, the wheel has given us this challenge. We gotta do it. Not gonna lie, I feel like we've made this challenge work in our favor because Diego Carlos was 31 and yeah, we signed a 32 year old, but this is David Alaba who's won multiple trophies throughout his career. So yeah, for once I'd say we finesse the wheel by signing Alaba. Okay, the one problem with signing Alaba is I just realized that Pau Torres is left footed too. I don't know, I just, I just, it doesn't feel right having two left footed center backs, but I guess with the quality they've got, it's fine. We still have another about 40 million to make maybe one more signing, so I'm thinking what can be done. I reckon guys, the next step is replacing McGinn, but we've already got Jacob Ramsey getting a bit better, you know, he's 23. I reckon we should just promote him. Instead, maybe it's time to look for a replacement for Lucas Digne, because he is, he's 30. Okay, so I just sold my backup left back, Alberto Moreno, to make some space for the potential new signing. And we actually got a decent chunk of money for him, about 14 million, we'll take it. 54 million, I reckon we can get a really good fullback for that kind of money. So Luke Shaw for 35 million is the player I've chosen to be our new left back. Honestly, he's got that experience from Man United, so I think we can't go wrong with this. Based on the challenge we had, I think we did a good job building our team for the season. The back line looks even more crazier. I'm just betting on Jacob Ramsey to really have a good season because we're trusting him. We're making it through another Premier League season. This time, can we get top four? And would you look at that? We've managed to secure top four. Third in the Premier League already. A few more seasons of building the team like this and we might end up becoming Premier League winners. Ooh, this is painful. We could have won a trophy, but City beat us in the FA Cup because we won the Conference League. We were also in the Europa League, but yeah. that did end well. But the most important thing this season is the growth of this team. Look at Jacob Ramsey. We trusted him in the midfield and he's become a baller. And also look at Oli Watkins. Somehow he's starting over Angel Correa and scoring more goals. We've honestly built a great foundation. Next season, when that Champions League money hits, we might be able to take Aston Villa to the very top of the Premier League. So far, things are going pretty smooth with Aston Villa, but the wheel of career mode could really change that. Oh no, by the looks of it, it is gonna change things. Financial turmoil. Reduce our budget by 40 million. Ah, since we're gonna be in the Champions League, this is gonna make things even more difficult. Being in the Champions League meant that our budget for the season was 112 million, but now it's down to 72 million. Brilliant. But okay, with that money, we can still make a couple of good signings, improve this team. And I'm thinking this season, we really need to bring in another player, a replacement for Buendia, because he's first of all unhappy in the club, and he's not really delivering. Do you know what, guys? One thing I've noticed is that the average age of our squad is pretty high. So I think this season, let's focus on bringing in a few youngsters. Honestly, guys, I'm a big fan of this kid. Wilfred Gunondo playing for a relegated Leeds United. Kind of makes sense to bring him to a club like Aston Villa. Ooh, but remember, our budget's been decreased to 72 mil. So we've got to try and keep this deal as cheap as possible. 35 million's my first offer. And well, that's worth. Wilfred Gunondo, welcome to Aston Villa. With 34 million left, I'm now thinking maybe it's time to bring in a younger center back. David Alaba isn't going to be getting any younger. We signed him because the wheel forced us, but now I think we can sell him and bring in someone else. So I am transfer listing David Alaba. His contract's expiring, so I don't think we'll be getting much for him. And so we sold David Alaba. To be fair, though, he gave us a really, really good season. I'm not going to lie. Helped us get to the Champions League. But if we want to become the club of the decade, we got to constantly evolve. And we actually sold him for 
37 million. That's good profit. And now we're talking. We're back up to 72 million. We've got one more signing remaining, and I think we got to go all in and bring in a world-class centre-back. With this guy, Robin Lenormand, being our budget, uh, I think he might just be. 86 rated. He's in his prime at the age of 28. I know he's not super young, but of all the options I was looking at, he was the most impressive. And if we can get him for a good deal, like maybe under 70 million, that would be an absolute win. But by the looks of it, he's going to be a bit expensive, and maybe we'll have to do like a swap deal. I've got this Cameron Archer guy who's come back from his loan spell if we can use him to reduce the fee just a little bit that would be a big dub but let's see and by the looks of it yep it works let's go oh my god his wages are super high we're gonna struggle to be able to pay that oh my days let's try and give him 130,000. it's a bit of a wage drop but it's still pretty good if he's willing to accept it he does and we've somehow signed him robin lenormand is now our final signing of this season guys this aston villa team has never looked better let's hope we can have a strong season maybe push further up in the premier league and also champions league okay we've made it to the end of the season and this seems like the first time we've taken an l we've literally gone outside the champions league positions seventh with an awful goal difference i don't get it you know what i think it's because we have a striker problem angel korea has been an absolute fraud for us guys i'm not even kidding every season he's just done nothing and look at this he's very unhappy at the club so i think next season we got to replace him because it's clearly affecting the team but anyways how did we do in the champions league brilliant we got no knocked out in the group stages itself and then the semi-finals of the Europa League this season's been a complete end okay wait a minute wait a minute I take that back we managed to win the FA Cups but still can't win a trophy but yup trophy number two with Villa in three seasons it's decent but I think we can do better also guys we're getting closer and closer to 800k subscribers and if you guys help me out we might get there soon so yeah subscribe to the channel for season four let's see what the wheel has got in store for us sell every player uh, this is not good sell every player over 32 and replace them with youth academy players oh no that means guys this season is going to be completely youth academy themed we're gonna have to sell all our 32 plus aged players and this 129 million that we've got we cannot use it to improve the team hopefully we can get some good academy players though all right let's see the squad and which are the over 33 players we've got three of them and two are goalkeepers this is awful we're gonna have to release Emmy Martinez. I can't believe it. That's our main goalkeeper gone. The same with this Jed Steer guy. He's gone as well. Tyrion Mings, that's fine. Okay, that's completely fine. No way. I just clocked. We do not have a goalkeeper. And if we do not find Academy prospects by the time the season begins, we're finished. What have we gotten ourselves into? Okay, guys, time to invest in the Youth Academy. We're straight up hiring the best scouts possible. We've got the money. We're doing exactly that. Is there any other five-star, five-star scout? There there you go. Now, let's send these scouts to countries where we can maybe get great goalkeepers from. Italy is known for good ones like Buffon, and we'll set the type to goalkeeper as well, so we just get what we need. Which other countries produce good keepers? Well, England is definitely an option, so we'll send one scout there. Ooh, Germany is one known for keepers, man. Let's go. Let's send a scout there. Now, we've got to hope before the start of the season, we can get a reasonably talented goalkeeper. We cannot sign anyone this season, guys. This season, it's all about the academy. Me. Guys, it's the 1st of August, and I'm pretty sure we've just got our first scouting report. If we don't get anyone decent here, oh boy, we're gonna get destroyed. Oh no, this isn't looking good. None of these keepers are... Oh, okay! Jonah Wagner! But he's he's a 15-year-old. We, we can't promote him to the first team. Well, we'll anyway sign him up, but that's, that's a solid keeper that we've just got. But none of the other guys in here look interesting. Hopefully our other scouts can come through. Okay, Ollie Marshall looks look like a baller, but again, he's 15. We're getting good keepers but they're all too young to be promoted finally the italian scout and uh oh, he's not brought us anyone decent man this is a problem we literally have scouted two amazing talents in the youth academy jonah wagner and ollie marshall but we're not allowed to use them because they're too young to get promoted we're basically gonna have to wait until the end of the month before we can find more scouting options our first game of the season and we're gonna have to play den donker in goal we're losing this man we're getting destroyed and well, to be fair, we only lost 1-0, but that's a chance to win a trophy gone. No way, guys. Just before the start of the Premier League season, Jonah Wagner has turned 16. I think his birthday just came about, and now we can promote him to the senior team. That is a lifesaver. At least we can have a goalkeeper now. But, yup, it doesn't really help to have a 63-rated keeper in goal for the entire Premier League season. This could get us relegated. We still needed to find...
find an academy player to replace Tyron Minx, and I found Bas de Jong. Seems like a player with decent potential, and let's promote him. And also, since we're at the end of the season, Oli Marshall is now 16. We're gonna promote him as well. But looking at the Premier League table, it does not make me happy. That's the difference a goalkeeper can make. I guess this was the best we could do this season. But I'll tell you something. Our goalkeeper, he's got a lot of potential. He's gonna buy nine overalls this season. That is wild. The rest of the team is so freaking good. Hopefully next season we can actually build on it and work on making it back to the Champions League. Last season, the wheel really got us into trouble. But hey, at least it helped us find some academy players that maybe in the future could help us out. But this season, guys, we've got to get Aston Villa back on track. I got to be winning trophies, got to be getting back to the Champions League. But since last season, we finished 13th in the Premier League. Our budget's been reduced massively. We've got 67 million to spend. And I think it's absolutely clear what we need to do. We get two signings. One has to be a new goalkeeper because Wagner's just 72 rated. Plus, Correa, it's time to replace him. But the real question is whether we can do all of that with the wheel of Kurimo deciding our next challenge. Let's see what our challenge is going to be for season five. Ooh, this is bad. Reduce the wages of your top three players by 20%. And also, look at this. If they don't accept the contract, we've got to sell them. This is bad. Okay, so our top three players in terms of wages, Musa Diaby, Yuri Telemans, and Lenormand. You're telling me if we fail to reduce their wages by like 20%, we're going to have to sell them? Oh, no. Let, let's start off with Lenormand. Oh, I got to do some quick math here. How much is 20% of 195,000? I'm using my phone's calculator, guys. It's it's 39,000. So basically, we're going to have to convince him to re-sign with us for 150k, approximately. Well, to be fair, though, I still think that might be possible, you know? Let's give it a go. Giving him a wage reduction, it's, it's going to be a problem, but let's see if he's willing to accept it. He is, but he'll ask a signing bonus and appearance bonus, but that does the job. We're allowed to do that, so yup, at least Lenormand will stay at the club. This is actually a pretty tough challenge, guys, because next up, we're going to have to do it with unity elements. Ooh, with the elements, it might be difficult because we need to reduce his wages by like 50k. That is massive. Okay, let's try and make it work. I'll offer 200,000 for unity elements and hopefully he'll ask for the signing bonus and everything. No, that's that's rather simple. We've renewed unity elements. Let's go. But now it's the most difficult one. The player who's 93 rated at this club right now. How do we reduce his wages by 20%? Guys, this is the biggest reduction we're going to have to give. 72,000. Basically, if he's willing to accept 280,000 per week, we should be fine. I reckon he should accept it. Oh, he wants a big fat signing bonus and everything. We'll, we'll let it work. And guys, we've somehow survived this challenge. And actually, reducing the wages like that has given us more money now to work with. Now we can focus on improving this team. We're starting things off with the goalkeeper signing and Alex Remiro is the player we've chosen. I know you might be thinking, why sign a 32-year-old keeper? But guys, he's 85 rated. And I kind of want to develop Wagner as well. So by the time Alex Remiro retires, I'm hoping Wagner will be ready to take his place. But for this season, Remiro's going right into that starting 11. But now we're going to focus on bringing in a new striker. To do that, I'm going to sell Angel Correa. We managed to sell him to West Ham for about 40 million, which I think is unreal. 80 million to bring in a new striker. The thing is, Ollie Watkins has somehow surpassed all expectations, so I don't mind him being a starter for now. Let's use that 80 million and bring in a youngster. Okay, I think I've found the best player we can sign right now. It's Adam Lodge who looks insane, 86 rated, only 24 years old. He might honestly displace Ollie Watkins in the first season itself. Oh, and his contract's expiring. And so for 65 million, we bring in this beast of a striker. Honestly, guys, I'm loving the squad we've built in this takeover. It's just not resulting in as many trophies. I kind of blame the wheel. But this season, we've got an unbelievable team. I'm hoping we can get back into business. We're making it through the Premier League season. This time, unacceptable to finish 13th. We need to make it to the top four. We make it to the end of the season, but sixth in the Premier League? Are you are you joking with the team we have? Nah, dude, this makes no sense. We've literally got a 94-rated Musa Diaby. Hlodzek and Gunanto are ballers, a solid midfield, an unreal defense. I really don't know what this team is lacking. We actually don't win any of the cups as well. This has literally been an absolute disaster. The thing is, that's why Musa Diaby performed Gunanto as well. I think Hlodzek suffered from an injury, or maybe just Oli Watt played over him. I'm confused, but I really don't know what this team is lacking. We're almost halfway through this takeover and we've just won two trophies, man. And the fact that we've built such an incredible team, I don't get it, man. I really don't. But we've still got five more seasons and
and I think we can do a madness with this team. Although a lot of it depends on the wheel. What are we going to get for season six? Come on, help us get back to the Champions League. Okay, this looks like a challenge. Qualify for Champions League or do starting players have to be transfer listed? Guys, no. Well, if we were ever lacking motivation, we've got it now. Let's improve this team as much as we can to guarantee top four. 76 million is what we're working with for this season, which isn't too bad considering we didn't qualify for Champions League. And I have a plan to use that entire money on one player because I feel like we need a big bump in quality. Maybe getting an Italian into our midfield to just help be composed, calm things down is the play and Nicolo Fagioli seems like the best option. 67.5 million and we've got our man. With Fagioli coming in, surely we can make it back to the top four. Otherwise, two of our starting 11 players, they're going to get binned off. End of the season and let's see if we've pulled it off. And by the looks of it, we're in the top six at least. Top five. And yes, oh my god, the relief. Top four has been secured. Aston Villa are back. But where do we end up finishing? Oh, second in the Premier League. We could have legit won the title. Unfortunately, we didn't win any trophies this season. But we're back in the Champions League, competing for Premier League title and everything. We've got to keep this progress up. Wheel of Kuremo, don't end up ruining our progress. Season seven, we've got to take Aston Villa to the top. And oh no, not this way. Transfer list your heart. Highest rated player. This is getting so frustrating. Are we ever going to end up winning the Prem? Oh man, this season I was ready to make some big signings and get this team to win the Premier League. But instead, we're going to have to transfer our highest rated player, which is undoubtedly Usa DRB. This is terrible. The only good thing I can say from this is that, well, we've got a budget of 120 million already. Selling DRB is going to give us crazy money. And that does mean we should be able to make some crazy improvements. The wheel has has finessed us, boys. It's made us sell a 94 rated Musa DRB. I can't believe it. But hey, at least we got 233 million for him. Basically, the real challenge begins now. We've got to try and replace the RB. You know what? When you've got this kind of money, you just need to go a bit crazy. And Bukayo Saka is what we're going to do because we sign him and I reckon we should be fine. Especially now that we're a Champions League club, it kind of makes sense too. And so we have Bukayo Saka joining us for 143 million. Since we're still left with a crazy amount of money, I've got an idea. Just signed a new left back for 60 million. Yo, this kid Fabiano Parisi is actually good. I've never used him before, but he's 85 rated and I thought it's a good upgrade. I think we've done a good job replacing DRB, strengthening the overall squad, but is it going to be enough to get us back to winning trophies? No way, man. Once again, we come so close to winning the league. Three points again. Oh, that is so frustrating. Finally, we're back in the Champions League and look at that. We topped our group. This is at least giving me a bit of hope. Threw in the round of 16 against Madrid. Wow. And threw against Hoffenheim. In the semi-finals, we got knocked out to Man United. So close this season, but yet so far. Yes, guys, it was another trophy last season, but I gotta say, we're getting closer and closer to winning the trophies, guys. We've gotta keep this progress up. We have the team. We have even the bench. I, I, I just don't know what's the extra thing we need. In spite of the wheel causing all these problems for us, we came so close to winning the big trophies last season. The team is there, guys. If we can honestly get a bit of help from the wheel from now on, it would really help us win the Premier League and the Champions League. But oh my goodness, this is such a struggle. Replace your striker with an under-23 prodigy. We're so deep in a career mode. How are we going to find one? Okay, guys, maybe I know how to do this, but it's going to involve first selling Adam Logic. He was finally coming into his own and now we're going to have to sell him. That is such an but hey, at least we got 111 million for him. The problem now is, even with that crazy amount of money we've got, we need to try and find an under-23 prodigy. I think our only options are regens. Okay, guys, I may have found Cristiano Ronaldo's regen, which is crazy, but I'm not completely sure if he is. 88-rated striker, Flavio Rodriguez, 23 years old. He's Portuguese, crazy good stats. We're gonna sign him up and hopefully he's good. Let's go, guys. At least this season, the wheel didn't try and ruin much. We managed to bring in a good young prodigy. I'm a bit unsure, but he could literally be Ronaldo's regen. But I don't think that's going to be enough for us to win the Champions League in the Premier League. Time is running out. We've just got three seasons left and I want to win those big trophies. I really think what we need is a world-class centre-back alongside Pau Torres. Lenormand, done a good job, but we need someone better. Oh, wow. And we've actually got an offer for the 33-year-old and I think I'm going to take it. Let's get that cash from him and go crazy for the centre-back signing.
happening. And now we've got the money to bring whoever we want for the center back position. We're finally breaking the bank, boys. 90 million and I'm bringing Jurian Timber. Guys, we need these kind of players in the team if we want to win the Prem and the Champions League. Surely now, guys, we've done enough to build an incredible team that's good enough to win the big trophies. Like, please. We've now made it to the end of the season. It's been eight long seasons with Aston Villa. Surely this is our moment to win the Premier League. By the looks of it, at least we're in the top four, in the top three, in the top two. This is it. This is the big moment. And yes, we won the Premier League. It feels like such a big achievement because we've been grinding from the first season itself. Eight seasons later, we finally achieve it. I gotta say, Ronaldo's regen had a pretty good debut season, so I gotta give the wheel a bit of credit for this one. But look at Wilfred Gunanto. What a beast he's become. Bukayo Saka is an absolute baller as well. But while things went amazing in the Premier League, in the Champions League, we got knocked out in the round of 16 on pens. Just two seasons, guys. That's all we've got to somehow win the Champions League. Let's give it everything. Time to see what challenge we get for season nine. Okay, this is a reasonable one. The wheel is finally helping us out. Sign only English players this season. That's fine. As long as it's not taking away my existing players, I'm good. Even though this season we've got 111 million to spend, I think we've got an amazing first team. I don't want to make too many changes there, but there is one change I would like to make. Wagner, the youth academy keeper, the wheel forced us to sign. I think it's time we make him a starter. He's 84 rated, will be better than Ramiro very soon. Now is the time to make that change. But although I'm not going to change anything from the first team now, what I do want to do is bring some squad depth this season. And with the English objective we've got, I think that should really help us. First up, we had a bit of depth to our midfield by signing Chuku Mecca. Honestly, 84 rated and we got him for 40 mil. We'll take it. Our second and final signing of the season, Anthony Gordon. Again, another really good player. I know he's 30 now with that far in a career mode, but we need him to be solid on the bench. With that, guys, I really think we've made a couple of solid signings at the back. We've got a good first team. We're Premier League winners. Time to see if we can become Champions League winners as well. Wait a minute. What? We end the season finishing ninth in the Premier League. What went wrong? Guys, has somebody left the team? I, I don't think anybody has. This team is as good as it's ever been. The bench as well is looking fantastic. What went wrong? I mean, it's a season where we won the FA Cup, but lost the community shield. Oh, the embarrassment in the Champions League round of 16 again, and I just clocked. We're not going to be in the Champions League next season. No! The final season in this takeover, I don't think I'll be able to win the Champions League. We've taken a massive L. How did this happen? I have no idea. Well, let's head into the final season and try and salvage the situation. We've got the Premier League to try and win, and I think the Europa League because we won the FA Cup. What has just happened? So this is the final challenge the wheel is giving us and it's a pretty tricky one you can only sign players from outside the top five leagues that basically means guys for this final season we can't sign players from la liga liga premier league of course bundesliga or even the Serie A. we're gonna have to really hunt and guys some of our players are getting super old like Telemans is dropping in his rating to be fair we can replace him at chukwumeka but yeah if we can bring in maybe a center back maybe a fullback i reckon we can win the prem and maybe the europa league that's my goal for this season. Oof, but because we had a terrible last season, we've just got 74 million to spend. Time to get scouting. The Liga Portuguese is probably the best league after, of course, the top five leagues. So let's see if there's someone decent there. Hey, let's go. Liga Portuguese for the win. Because Tomas Araujo, 85 rated. This is perfect. Since his contract was expiring, we managed to negotiate a deal for just 32 million. And there's our new signing. Let's go. Honestly, guys, I've spent a good 10 minutes trying to find a good right back from leagues other than the top five and i absolutely failed so i guess for the final season this is the team we have and let's hope we can win the big trophies with them of course it's frustrating we won't be able to win the champions league but there's still the europa league and so we make our way through the final season ah oh, that's frustrating it was a good effort to get aston villa back into the champions league but we could only finish third in the premier league in our final season but hey we do win a community shield and we'll take that but guys it's a completely different story in the Europa League because we've made the final. That is insane. Remember, we started this takeover with Aston Villa winning the Conference League. We could end it by winning the Europa League. That would be tremendous. All right, this is it. The moment of truth. Can Aston Villa win the Europa League to wrap things up? And yes, 
Chukwu Mecca gets the goal. And Aston Villa have added another trophy to the collection. I'll be honest, guys. We didn't make Aston Villa the best club in England. But we did make them a mainstay in the top four for the most part. Got them winning the Europa League, Conference League, a Premier League title as well. I think we did a good job. If you guys want to see me do this video with maybe Brighton or any other club, drop a like in the video. And also, if you guys want to see me take over my career as a manager, click here to watch that. That was a fun video.